what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 31 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In the previous video, we covered offline automation in Logic. So if you haven't watched that video yet or you don't already have a understanding of how automation works, I highly recommend you go back and watch that video first to cover the fundamentals. In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate three things related to real-time automation. The real-time automation modes, these things right here, read, touch, latch, and write. I'll also demonstrate how to assign controller assignments using the controller assignments dialog. And I'll also demonstrate a really, really handy automation feature called automation quick access. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I cover this because I think you'll love this feature. It makes automation super quick and super easy, even if you only have one real-time controller. But first, what is real-time automation? Essentially what this means is that instead of clicking and drawing in automation shapes and parameters with your mouse, you're going to control parameters in real time during playback to write in automation. But before we get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. Boombox.io is a brand new audio file collaboration tool that's perfect for musicians, bands, producers, mixing engineers, really anyone who needs to work on music or audio projects in a collaborative way. Boombox.io allows you to upload your tracks and receive time-stamped feedback from collaborators on your project, and all of this is handled securely on the Boombox website. Only collaborators you invite to your project can listen to your tracks and leave feedback. If you're ready to give Dropbox the boot, head over to boombox.io and sign up today to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so first let's go over the simplest way to use real-time automation using your mouse or trackpad and the automation modes. If you want to follow along with me, I've included this demo project in the video description below as a free download. So virtually any parameter in Logic can be automated in real time. Volume, pan, plugin parameters, instrument parameters, even the MIDI effects plugins can be automated. But in order to use real-time automation, you first have to understand the four real-time automation modes. So I'm gonna press A to pull up my automation, and by default, the starting automation mode is read. Read mode is used when you already have automation written on a track, and you just want the track to interpret the automation you've written. And this will turn green when you have some automation on the track, you can see now it's shown in green, as opposed to this one that doesn't have any automation on the track. If you bypass the automation, even in read mode, this will bypass the automation on the track and the automation will be ignored. Next up, we have touch and latch. These are likely the two real-time automation modes that you'll use the most when you're writing in automation. So let's start with touch mode. With touch mode, you can move a parameter. I'll use volume as an example here. And when you stop touching the parameter, when you let go of the parameter, the value will move back to its starting value, to its original starting value. So let me demonstrate this. I'm gonna mute these other tracks for demonstration. And when you write in real-time automation, you don't have to press record. All you have to do is choose a real-time automation mode and then press play and then move the control that you want to automate. So I'm gonna play around with the volume here. I'm gonna start low, I'm gonna bring it up and then I'm gonna come back down a bit and then I'm gonna let go and watch what happens. Okay, so what happened there? When I let go of my mouse, when I let go of the volume fader with my mouse, the value jumped back down to its starting value. You can see it started at negative 15.4 and it ended at negative 15.4. So that's what touch mode is great for when you want to return the value back to its starting point after you've drawn in the automation. So I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that and let's check out latch mode. Now, if you don't want the value to drop back down to its original value, this is what latch mode is great for. The automation will stay at its current value when you release the control. So this time I'm gonna pull the volume up, pull it down, then when I let go, it'll just stay there. And 
And you can see after I let go of the control, the automation stays at the current value. It does not return to its starting value. Now let's say I wanna write in some pan automation. I'll click here, let's make sure that pan is shown. And what I'm gonna do this time is I'm just going to, using latch mode, press play and then move my pan knob around. Now, when you're done writing in automation, it's very, very important that you change the automation mode back to read, because if you have this on touch or latch still, you might accidentally move a parameter and overwrite the automation that's there. So anytime you're done writing in automation, make sure you go back to read mode. Lastly, let's talk about this write mode. So when you select write mode, the first time you select it, you'll get this warning and it says write mode erases multiple parameters in one go without touching anything. In most cases, it's better to use latch or touch. So that's exactly what it does. It overwrites all automation parameters on the track, even if you're not controlling anything. So for example, if I started over here somewhere and if I just press play, watch what happens. it completely overwrites all of the parameters that are on that track. And also notice that after you use write mode, it jumps back to touch mode as a safety. So write mode can be used if you want to write in new automation on maybe one or multiple parameters, and you just want all of the other automation to be overwritten. That's what you can use write mode for. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move the volume knob around again. And of course, it's reset the pan to negative 40 because that was the starting position of it. If I set that back to center and then write in some more automation, it's going to pull the pan back down to zero. So I almost never use write mode just for that reason. In most cases, if I want to start from scratch with my automation on a track, I'll just select the track, go up to mix, go to delete automation and select delete all automation on selected track. That starts me from scratch and then I can start writing in automation parameters with touch or latch. Now, in addition to volume and pan, there are plenty of other parameters that can be automated. For example, on this track, in the previous video, I demonstrated that there's a tremolo plugin on the track, and the depth of the tremolo plugin is controlling this sort of pulsing effect. So if I pull up my automation again, turn on latch, I can simply move this depth parameter with my mouse, it will write in that automation, even if the automation parameter is not selected. And by the way, there is a quicker way to show an automation parameter here rather than moving it like I demonstrated in the previous video. Even if you're in read mode, if you simply go up to mix and then select auto select automation parameter in read mode, if I just click on a parameter in read mode, it'll automatically display that parameter here in the automation menu. So I just wanted to show that to you since I Forgot to show that in the previous video. So let's go back to touch mode and let's draw in some depth automation in the Tremolo plugin. Using real-time automation, you can get some curves and shapes that are more human, are more tactile in nature, and you can create some really interesting sound design on some of these tracks by having more tactile control over your automation parameters. Okay, so I'm going to switch this back to read mode because I'm done with that track. Next up, let's talk about using real-time automation with controller assignments. Controller assignments allow you to take knobs and faders on MIDI controllers and assign them to parameters within your Logic project. Now, when I say things like knobs and faders, I don't mean things like modulation wheel or pitch bend. These are likely already pre-assigned parameters, but most MIDI keyboard controllers have at least a few knobs or faders these days. Even my cheap Alessis V25 has four knobs. 
But for demonstration, I'm actually going to use my Monogram CC console with three knobs, three faders, and it even has a big rotary knob that I'll use later for automation quick access. So how do you pair a knob or fader on your MIDI controller with a control in Logic? You're gonna start by pressing Shift Option K. This will bring up your controller assignments dialog. If you see any controls in here that you're not using, just click on them and delete them to start from scratch. Likely you will start in easy view like this. I like to go over to expert view. And then what you're gonna do is click learn mode, click on the control in a plugin instrument or on the channel that you want to learn, and then slowly move a knob or fader on your MIDI controller. So I've done that and you can see it says learned. So it's learned this knob with the cutoff frequency in the ES2. Now there is one thing I do want you to check. With all of these MIDI continuous controllers, these are based on zero to 127 MIDI values. So if a fader is all the way down, it's zero. If it's all the way up, it's 127. If a knob is all the way to the left, it's zero. If it's all the way to the right, it's 127. Sometimes with certain MIDI controllers, the range of values is bugged. So when you learn a control this way, you may want to scroll down here on the right and go to where it says value and make sure that the min max values are set to zero to 127. This will give you the full range of values on that continuous controller. If it says anything other than zero to 127, it's been likely bugged. So you'll wanna make sure you fix that. So now with that controller assignment, if you look at the cutoff knob here, when I turn that knob on my MIDI controller, I can now control that parameter inside the synthesizer. And I can assign other controls as well. So shift option K, I'll turn on learn mode. I'll click on the drive knob this time, and I'll move one of the faders on my MIDI controller. Now you can see this one wasn't bugged. It does say zero to 127, so we're good there. And then when you're done, just turn learn mode off. So now I have two different controls that I can write in automation for in the ES2 using my MIDI controller. Now you can write these in one at a time or you can actually do both of them at the same time. And the process is identical to what I demonstrated before. You just hit A to pull up your automation. Make sure that you're either in touch or latch mode. Press play and start moving those parameters. And again, like I said, you can do these one at a time or you can do them together like I did. I just wanted to show you that it is possible to write in multiple automation parameters simultaneously. And if you click here, you'll be able to go and select that other automation parameter and you can see both of them at the same time. Again, just make sure that after you're done, you switch this back over to read mode and now all of this automation on that track will be interpreted. Now, if using the controller assignments window seems like way too much work. There is another way to do this. Okay, so a much quicker way to do this is to use a function in Logic called Automation Quick Access. So to access this, you go up to Logic Pro, Settings, Automation, and in this dialog at the very bottom, you'll see an option for Automation Quick Access. So what does this do? This allows you to pair any CC on your MIDI controller with whatever the active automation parameter is on the selected track. So if volume is the active automation parameter on the selected track, that's what the CC will be paired to. If it's pan, that's what the CC will be paired to. So whatever the active parameter is here is what the CC will be automatically paired to, and you don't even have to use the controller assignments window. So let me just show you how to set this up. It's super quick and super easy. All you do is you click learn message, and it's gonna say slowly move the control you want to assign. So I'm gonna use my big knob here. And then when you're done, you just click done. And now you'll see automation quick access is on. Now watch what happens when I close out this window. The active automation parameter is volume. So when I move the control, it adjusts the volume control. If I go to pan, now I'm controlling the pan. It automatically assigns these things without having to use the controller assignments window. And this also extends over to plugins and instruments. However, if you use that 
auto select automation parameter and read mode option I showed you earlier, this makes it even easier. You can just click on whatever parameter you want to learn and that parameter will automatically be learned using automation quick access. So if I wanna control the rate of the tremolo, I just select it and now I can adjust that parameter. If I wanna adjust the smoothing, I can do that. If I want to adjust the symmetry, I just click on it. I can do that. So because whatever parameter I click on shows up as the active parameter here, I can now just click on a parameter and it auto assigns it with automation quick access. And what I'm going to do is just write in some automation to bring in and pull out that pulsing effect. So I'll just go over to touch or latch mode, hit play, and then move my MIDI CC. create some really interesting and tactile sound design. So I hope you guys enjoyed this overview of real-time automation using the controller assignments window along with automation quick access. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.